It's time for the show that engages with people of the combat sports world. And now, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed combat sports show champion of the world, Flash Knockdown! Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining me on episode 17 of Flash Knockdown with the number one ranked UK and Ireland's amateur lightweight mixed martial artist, Mark. You've been warned. You win. (laughs) That's fucking illegal. Welcome to the show, Mark. What's happening, man? How's it going? (laughs) I'm good. How is that nickname? That's good, man. I've never had a nickname before, man, but I like that. If you don't know, now you know. You've been warned. Too late, man. Too late. That's Everyone's right, brother. Warned. That's right. That's right. Now, I had to get you on the show, Mark, before you turn pro. So thank you very much for agreeing to come on. No problem at all, man. It's my pleasure. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So, Mark, before we go any further, could you give the viewers an overview of your MMA career, the gym you represent, and how people can find you online, please. My name is Mark Ewan. I'm 11, 3 and 1 in MMA. I'm 5, 0 and 1 in Muay Thai, and I represent higher level in Whitburn in Scotland. It's called, you can get me at, on Instagram at underscore Mark Ewan or Twitter Mark Ewan 4. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mark. We now no move on. Thank you, brother. We now move on to the next part of the show that I've called Flash Choices. For first-time viewers, I will ask Mark 10 questions with two possible answers. And Mark, you choose the one that best suits in a flash. Got it? Got it. All right. First one, Mark. Kickboxer or Rocky? Kickboxer. 100%. Why is that? A uh, big fan of Jean-Claude Van Damme growing up. That was the first kind of martial arts film that I've seen. And I remember actually after watching that, I was crazy. I was running about his knee in the walls and stuff like that. And that really got me, really burned that fire in my heart, man. That, that's when I first started Muay Thai, kind of just watching that. Excellent. And uh, I believe both Kickboxer and Rocky were the, were the two films that inspired you to take up martial arts. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Second one then, uh, Mark. Kamara Usman or Israel Adesanya? Kamara Usman. And I believe you met Usman in uh, Fight Islands. Yeah, yeah. I met him when I was there. It was on the first day. He was, he was actually cutting weight, so didn't get a, much of a conversation with him, but it was brief. And just to see him and get a photo, obviously, fellow Nigerian Biller, so it was good to see him. And I'm a big fan of his work. Yeah, I mean, he's class. Uh, yeah, he definitely is a class act. And uh, he's facing Masvidal um, in a few weeks in the rematch. Who you got for that one? Kamara Usman again. I reckon you'll probably just do the same. Yeah, I mean, I, me too. And just may even get the finish. We'll see, man. But I'm a big fan of Kamara Usman. He's, I don't see yeah. anybody beating him at this, at this rate. No. Nah, too good, eh? He's massive at the weight as well, man. He's huge. Yeah, huge. Yeah, absolutely massive. I couldn't agree more. Do you think? Do you think if he if he stepped up to middleweight, he'd take out uh, Adesanya or or not? <laughs> I, don't, I never see the guys fighting, man. They'll not fight just because they're both Nigerian. I don't Correct. see it happening. But and when it comes to Israel, I don't see him being Kamara being able to deal with Israel striking. Nah, He's just too good on the feet. Another level. Stuff. Yeah, agreed. That's right. Agreed. Okay, Mark, third one. Mai Tai or Muay Thai? Muay Thai, definitely. Yeah, and you're 5-0 and in Muay Thai? Yeah, yeah. So it's, I think it's 5-0 and 1. My first fight was a draw. Was Your first draw, fight was a draw? Was yeah, yeah. So it was one of the amateur, like my first ever fight. It was that guy's first ever fight. So they caught an exhibition, so they gave us both a draw. But I definitely won that fight, man. Ha, 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 ha. Next one then, Mark. Kobe Bryant 
or Shaquille O'Neal? Kobe Bryant. Definitely. Kobe. Kobe's a man. Yeah, man. Gone, gone too soon. Yeah, 100%. It's a shame, man. It is really a shame, but his work lives on. Like I said, man, his values and his principles and everything he's done for the game yeah. of basketball. Yeah. Yeah. His, his legacy lives on. Yeah. 100%. You're a big Lakers fan? Like I said, I'm, I'm just a big Kobe fan. That's it. Like I, I like the Lakers, man, but I'm more a fan of Kobe. Like yeah. His work ethic, man. He changed his number to 24 for 24. 24. Day, that's how much he's willing to work. You know what I mean? That's he's right. He's a workaholic. He's going to put everyone into it. And once I came to the NBA and I looked around, I saw all the guys that weren't working as much as I was. Then I started to understand that, you know, how I went about it is hard work. To me, it was just, I just love what I do. So I want to do it as much as possible. Just what he's done for the game of basketball. Obviously, you've got Michael Jordan, but you ain't got Michael Jordan. You always think of Kobe as well. Like he's he's a stud, man. He's solid. Yeah, he was. Okay. Next one in Mark. Submission or KO? KO. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna, I'm gonna ask you a little bit later. The referee denied you, didn't he? This is number one bullshit. Aye, man, that hurts that one, man. <laughs> Deny me. He denied you. Oh, okay, oh, man. Oh, oh, man. I will cover I'm that later. That. Yeah, we'll cover that. One back. Oh, standards. With you, anything's possible. Yeah, you know it, bro. I know that, man. I know that, brother. Okay, next one, Mark. Mark Coleman or Mark Hunt? Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt. Why? Just his walk-off KOs and that one against the... Uh... Roy Nelson, oh, that was a peach, man. Just, oh, I like Mark Cunt. Just the way he is in that as well. I like the Australians, man. They're cool. He's a cool guy. And I don't know too much about Mark Coleman. I know his name, but I've never really watched much of his fights or know much about him. Well, Mark Mark Coleman was the first uh, UFC heavyweight champion. Oh, really? Yeah, which is now Francis Ngannou. Shows how much yeah. I know, man. I need to study more than me, man. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of old school enemy. I feel because it's so raw and it's so, it's yeah, and that's a bit different and it's weird. I'm not the biggest fan of watching it. I feel I get bored easy. I like to see crisp technique. I, just move with oh! Oh! I like to see the new modern age of MMA. We're even on total strikes at the moment. Oh! Yeah, that's what I'm more a fan of, like MMA nowadays, man. How it evolves and stuff. That's what I'm more a fan of. Yeah, a bit like Adesanya. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent like Adesanya. Vincent smiles. It. Oh! Yeah, man, it's still it's still a very young sport, so it's you know it it's it's evolving every year. Yeah, you forget how young MMA is, man. It's very relatively new and still it's the fastest growing sport in the world at the moment, man. I feel like we've came a long way, but I feel like we can still go a long way. Man. We can be in the Olympics and that soon, then that's when it will really take over. I think. Yeah, I think it's only like 20, uh, 28 years old. So yeah, very, very young. when you hear that, man. Yes. Yeah, very young. You, you'll you be in the UFC in a couple of years? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I'll, be I'll be getting the gold. I'll be doing it all, man. Standard. Okay, next one, Mark. Ewan Bremner or Jade's Ewan? Who? <laughs> Say that again, sir, please. Okay, okay. so two two namesakes. Ewan Bremner or Jade's Ewan? Jade Ewan. I don't know who they are. You don't know who they are? Okay, so nah. Ewan, okay. Ewan Bremner is a Scottish actor who is in train spotting or train, yeah, train spotting. Oh, Ewan McGregor. No, Ewan Bremner. Bremner? Yeah, Ewan Bremner. He, Ewan, Ewan spelled like, like the way you've got it spelled. E W. So mine's is E W E N, and his 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 is also E W E N. Is it? Yeah, you you in Bremner. I don't know who it is though. What have character you seen? is it in Train Spotting? Ah, oh, forget, I forget, I forget. Have you have you seen? He's in Train Spotting one and two. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it there for. Yeah, and uh, J uh, Jade's Jade Ewing also spelt like yours. She was in uh, Sugar Babes. Shows how much I know, man. I've not a scuba who they are like. Really? And, and they've got it? they've got their names spelt like yours. I need to do, I need to do my, my research, man, and find out. But we'll go with you and Bremner because I'm a big fan of Train Spotting. It's a Scottish film. Okay. We'll uh, 
It, it is. And I'm, I'm a big fan of Jade Ewan. Jade Ewan, if you're watching. Hey, around you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out, shout out. Next one, Mark. The rematch with Michael Quinn or the rematch with Nathan Jessimir? I want them both, mate. I want them both, but we're going to have to go with Michael Quinn because he got the finish. Yeah, he I'm did. Never, Armbar. Mate, I've never been finished before. And, oh, that fucking haunts me, that one. Like That, that still cuts <laughs> deep. Oh, therefore. Yeah. Then that, and that was your last I loss. June. Them now, man. I'd absolutely oh. struck the both of them. Course, course. Yeah, they could oh, they couldn't take the heat with you now, man. See all my fights that I've lost. I'd love to get them back. Really? Do you watch your do you watch your losses more than your wins? Or do you watch do you watch your wins more than your losses? I watch my wins more than my losses, but I've what I've obviously watched my losses. I remember watching them once once you've lost, obviously you watch it, you analyze it, see what you went wrong, but that was a time in my life where I was losing quite a bit. So I didn't go back and dwell on that time yet. I mean, I've moved on. I'm a different person. So, but it's still, it's still like to get the wins back at some point. Of course. Of course. Okay. Nine for one mark. Samantha or disaster? Oh, man. Eh? <laughs> disaster. 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 Yeah. Okay. Disaster, lovely. Disaster. disaster. Okay. <laughs> and the last one oh, then, Mark. Dave and Jay Huss, man. That's right, that's right. I've done my research, haven't I? Uh, you know, man. My, my. You know, I know, brother. I know, man. I know. All right. And then the last one, Mark. Braids or skin fades? Say that again. Braids or skin fades? I'd say braids, man. Like, I would have braids right now, but I see if it wasn't for the high maintenance, man. See, try to, obviously, I, got my, I was getting my hair twisted and stuff. But see, try to wrestle and that, man, they're coming out. Oh, it's a total nightmare. So I literally have a skin fade or a skin head just because it's convenient. <laughs> that is actually it. Just because yeah. it's convenient, man. I'd much rather have dreads, but it is what it is. Yeah. You, you're you looking like uh, Kevin Lee with them braids. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I like Kevin Lee, man. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin Lee's cool, man. So... How did you enjoy your flash choices, Mark? Good? That, that was good, man. That was good. That, especially that last one there. Man. Obviously, disaster. I'm like, what was he talking about? Then I was like, obviously, it's Jay Huss and Dave, man. I've got to, obviously, you've done your research. You know who I like. You know what I like. Your questions like about Kobe and Shaquille and that, man. I enjoyed that. Yeah. And Most you even got to... That, man, where you need to think fast. Good. And, and you even got to know about you and Bremner. Uh, therefore, man. I'll need to look them up. I'll need to look that Jay doing up as well. Obviously, never. I know. I know the sugar babes. I think everyone does, but I just never knew who. But I need to look that one up. Therefore, look her up, man. Look her up. All right, Mark. So, um, as you've enjoyed a long and successful amateur career, I'm keen to get stuck into your MMA flashlights. Otherwise, I could be here all day asking questions. So, let's begin with your MMA debut in March 2016. A week after Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz won at UFC 196. What do you remember about that fight? And bearing in mind the magnitude of the show, did that get you excited for your fight? Yeah, 100%. At the time when I first kind of started it, fighting MMA or competing in MMA, Conor McGregor was the guy. Yeah, I mean, everyone's watching Conor McGregor. Everyone's chatting shit. Everyone's doing his style, his spinning kicks, his hook kicks, his wee kind of prancing his feet, leaning back, hitting the straight and stuff. So I remember going to that fight, obviously, I'm inspired by Conor McGregor. So I'm just sitting like this. Obviously, I'm not a southpaw at the time. I'm orthodox, but I'm just sitting. I'm trying to get the guy with the straights and the uppercuts and try to get the walk-off KO. I remember getting the KO, jumping in the cage, hitting on Conor McGregor and stuff, putting my hands up, man. So definitely... It uh, definitely inspired me. Like I, everybody, it's hard not to be inspired by somebody like Conor McGregor who done so much for the game, and he was such a dominant fighter on his way up. So definitely, that inspired me before that. Brilliant, fight. brilliant. And so uh, you must have been seventeen or so when you made your MMA debut. Before that, you you competed in K one and was also undefeated in Muay Thai. So why did you eventually choose MMA? 
So the story is, when I first started training, I heard that somebody, well, just go, I'll tell you how I started MMA in the first place, right? So I've always wanted to try it. Mum was trying to get me in. I was trying to find a place. And then some boy at my school was apparently going to an MMA club. And I was like, what? You're going to this MMA club? I was like, you're taking me away. He's like, I'm going tonight. I was like, sweet, I'm with you. He ended up picking me up. We go there. And I started MMA. So I started MMA for the first few weeks. And then, I, but that was an MMA class. I was seeing after it, guys were sparring, they had the gear on, they were fighting each other. And I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be fighting each other. So it turned out I could only spar if I started doing Muay Thai. So I pied the MMA and started doing Muay Thai. And then that's where my career went down, that Muay Thai route. That's why I started fighting Muay Thai. And then I eventually uh, transitioned back into MMA. So really, and I started MMA first, but I wanted to spar. So I, I started see. doing Muay Thai, went in that route and had a career in that. And did you compete in K1 too? I never competed in K1. I think I only competed in Muay Thai. It was C class and then I fought A class when I was in Thailand. I went to Thailand to train and I fought when I was over there. I wow. I went to Thailand twice I, before. Wow. Now. What gym did you um, uh, go to in, in, in Thailand? It's Sassy Prapa in Bangkok. A great gym, man. Some really, really good Thai fighters out there. Eh? Rung Gravy is one of the best. You've wow. Got Boo, you've got Malapet, Sassy Prapa. These are kind of like, if you know Thai, you know these guys are solid. So I went, I've been to that gym and I've been to Kiat Pont Tip, which is, you know, if you know John Pop in Leeds? No, I don't. He's got a kind of, so John Pop's a great coach down in Leeds. Uh, but he's got a gym where he came from in, in a bank, uh, it's also Bangkok in Thailand, uh, like Kiat Pont Tip. I went there as well. That was, a, that was a great gym, tremendous gym, man. Some really, really good fighters out there as well. So I've been twice and I've trained twice. So it was Sassy Prapa and Kiat Pont Tip, man, but they're, Top class gems every time. Wow. And and did he give you flashbacks of uh, kickboxer? Definitely, man. <laughs> See, you know, man. That was crazy, man. Oh, yeah. A mad place. It is Thailand crazy. Is awesome. uh, there's always something place. going on, isn't it? There's there's always something oh, going awesome on. Place, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I bet it is. Oh, mate. Oh, that's nuts. Like, uh, yeah. You need, you, you need to actually go to Thailand to know what I mean when I tell you, like, that the place is crazy. Like, you can do anything. Yeah, yeah it's like a yeah. land that is just such a crazy place, but at the same time, some experience is where I was. Yeah, probably my favorite country ever. If I could go anywhere right now, I'd be in Thailand. Mate. Facts. Yeah, it's that yeah. good. Yeah, it's be the, beautiful. You've got the busy nightlife and stuff. Yeah, you've got the malls and stuff, but then you've got the islands where you can go and chill. It's got everything you need, man. You can train. You've got all these good gyms. It really is a really really nice place. Good food as well. Oh man, the food's amazing! I so I, when I was there, man, I was just eating curries every day. So breakfast, yeah. lunch, dinner, I'd eat a curry. I've tried yeah. every Thai curry there is. Yeah, I mean, I was just eating curries all the time. Would be rude not to, eh? No, oh, it's great, man. The, <laughs> place, great, man. the foods, the foods, tremendous, man. It's a great place. Yeah, and um, Mark, you won your MMA debut by KO in only yeah. two minutes and eighteen seconds. Could it have gone any better? Nah, definitely not. Nah. That's, <laughs> what, that's, what kinda, that's what I'd visualised. That's what I'd expected. Uh, I trained hard for that fight. Went in hoping to get the KO. Obviously got the KO. I jumped in the cage. I was buzzing. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Right out after it, my friends, man. That was a, that was a big win. That was a, it's cool. Obviously, fighting Muay Thai, going to MMA, and just getting that first win out of the way, it was, it was definitely a great experience. Yeah, it was and a big deal. And a better, like you said, getting the KO. Yeah, brilliant. So, Mark, let's now flash forward by eight months and to Bonfire Night in 2016, where you got your first crack at MMA Gold for the promotion you made your debut with, Headhunters FC. You faced, at the, at the, at the time, fellow Muay Thai champion and 4 and 2 competitor, Nathan Jessimir. How much were you relishing the challenge and opportunity? When I think back, I probably wasn't ready for a title shot. But I think I was, it was a two and one. I was had my yeah. I just had a loss before that, so I was literally fighting for the title off a loss. Probably shouldn't have been getting the opportunity to fight for the title, but I did, and I took it with, with both hands. I was like, I was buzzing to get in there and actually fight for it. Especially that was my kind of home show. I thought I'll go in there and get the belt. And I was fighting, they said, Nathan Jesmer was a Muay Thai champion. So preparing for that fight, I thought, nice one. I'm going to be able to go in here and we're just going to trade. And we'll see who's, we'll see who's better, you know what I mean? We'll just trade in the middle and we'll see who's better. 
this is what I was expecting. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm coming in here thinking this Muay Thai is he's, he's a WBC Muay Thai champion. Straight away, the guy's shooting on me, man. Oh, yeah. you're a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck this, man. And at that time, man, obviously my first loss, and this my that's been my second loss, my wrestling was dog meat, man, terrible. I didn't even try and get up or that. I would just try and play from guard. So obviously getting taken down and losing the three rounds, I was gutted, especially because I wanted to just trade. That's why I expected him to come in and just obviously bang it with me. But that wasn't the case, man. So it was a, it was a better one for me to lose, especially on my home show again and yeah. for my chance at gold do you know what I mean so yeah that is what it is I learned from that definitely you did learn so as as you just briefly touched on there Mark um unfortunately you lost the decision but you literally took zero damage in a fight your opponent was hell-bent on taking you down and lying on top of you for most of the three rounds how frustrating was it to lose in that fashion and what lessons were you were you able to take away that night I was super frustrated, man, just to be held down for three rounds and someone sitting your guard and not really try and pass or try and strike. But to be honest, at that time, I never really knew much get-ups or that. I wouldn't, I'd wouldn't. only try and throw a few subs off my back. I mind in that fight, actually. I'm sure I got an inverted triangle at one point and I was on top of him and I was like, I was just so green, man. I didn't know what to do or finish him. I had his back at one point as well and I fell off. Like, I was just so green. So I've took so much away from that, especially... The grappling aspects and try not to rush things just take the time get position and then get the finish and just being more composed in certain positions and especially just try to get up man see mma back then i feel like when you when i got taken down i'll just sit there and try and throw something on my back you can't be doing that you need to try to get up you know what i mean you need to at least try and get up because throwing subs off your back is fucking you know i was going to get us up if you keep trying it yeah you know i mean you need to try and get up and then create scrambles and then yeah. get back to the feet where i'd like to be you know what I mean? Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And just to prove, oh, it must have been. It must have been. And just to prove how much damage you took, I believe you were scheduled to fight again in two weeks against Emmett McCracken from Northern Ireland. But that fight got cancelled. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dead. I, I, can't, I, I didn't know the opponent. I knew I was matched in the show. Yeah. Last time I never really know my opponent until it's close to the time. But I was I was matched. Me and Kira supposed to be going over to compete. I can't remember how, uh, why we never fought. I can't really remember the reason, but I was fine. Yeah, you were fine. I, I was fine after that. I never took much damage at all, man. Let's show the guy no, sat No, nothing. I might no get damage. The cage and I was raging. I was like, I feel like I've not even fought. I've just been sitting on my back. I'm not tired. There's nothing wrong with me. I was like, I was was, bit upset with that one. Yeah, that's devastating, man. That's that's hard to take. That's hard to take. So um, I now want to flash forward, Mark, by seven months. And the guy that we mentioned earlier, um, when you faced Michael Quinn in June 2017, a fight that still represents your last loss almost four years ago. It was another opponent who was determined to take you down in order to nullify your striking ability. Do you feel looking back at those times, your opponents may have seen your grappling as an area to target? Yeah, definitely. That's the... I feel like once I get in there, it doesn't matter who it is, you could be a striker. As soon as we start striking, you're going to be shooting. You're going to be shooting for your life, you know what I mean? That's always been the case. And I feel like a lot of these guys, especially my, like my first few losses, these guys exploited my weaknesses here. This is something I should have been working at the time at the gym, my get-ups. working off my. I was definitely working stuff off my back, but at the time I wasn't trying to get up. I was never ever trying to get up, which is fucking stupid. Yeah, you know I mean? I should be trying to get up and get back to the feet but uh, these guys definitely exploited uh, my weaknesses at the time that was just taking me down yeah and after that fight with Michael M Mark you were on a free fight losing skids were there any doubts creeping into your mind at the time and if not how did you keep your head up stay resolute and essentially retain that belief I think it'd be hard not to be I think it'd be hard not to have any doubts after three losses back to back. After going two and all, two KOs, undefeated Muay Thai career, and then having three losses back to back, man, it was. I had to really reevaluate re what was happening and what I was doing with myself. Yeah, you know I mean, I, I'd give everything to the sport, but I feel like at that one time, where I had the three losses back to back, my head wasn't in it as much. I think I might have thought I was a man. Yeah, you know I mean, I was away partying and stuff, and I was losing fights. I mean, I lost one fight 
I lost actually to Meg Quinn and I was right out partying that night. I think after that loss, I went away to Magaluf, partied, but when I came back, I was like, I cannot keep doing this. This is not me. Yeah, you know I mean, I want to be great. I want to do great. There's something I need to change. I need to change how I look at sport. I need to change how I commit myself to the sport. I need to change something anyway in order to start getting back on the on the win streaks and getting getting the wins in, man. But definitely, I learned so much from the three losses. That's definitely one of the most, if not the most beneficial thing that's ever happened to me in my career. Is losing the three losses, especially back to back like that, because like you said, I was really doubting myself. I was like, "Am I? Am I really? Am I going to be as great as I want to be? Can I be as great as I want to be?" I'm just lost three back to back, and I was like, "Come on, I need to use this, these three losses to to define me. This will be a turning point from here on out. I'm going to go on a win streak now. I'm never going to lose again. I'm going to go. I'm going to come up myself with this, with every fibre of my being, and then everyone's just getting smoked. Once I tune in, once I lock in, they're all getting it." And that's what's happened since, man. That's exactly what happens. That's exactly what happened. Wow, I got chills from that boy. Jeez! Yeah. 